Welcome to part two of the Wildly Wars commentary. Now we're going after Iceman, whose new profile picture looks like we just ran some in the shower. He showers with the parka on? Yeah. Ice showers. <laughs> oh god, this is the most ass ugly ice level I've ever seen. <laughs> is that the frozen palm trees? It's so colorless. Uh, it's very monotonous, yes. It, it, it's, it doesn't even look like the background is ice. It, it looks just like gloomy mountains. Which would work in a haunted house setting. Yeah, it probably would. But there's like two shades of one of one color in the background. And in the foreground, three shades of one color. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I actually did a bit more research on the Sega channel itself. In North America, uh, monthly fees were around $15 a month. Plus a $25 activation fee. So... To 15 times 12, you'd be paying 170, like no, 180 dollars. So yeah, year. that's like three. You could, uh, seeing as I don't think I can't imagine that you'd be using the Sega Channel that much. That's just money you could spend on like three games. Uh, well, themselves. I think I think the, the the costly subscription fee and the timing of it all was what really hampered it. I mean, 1994. No one's talking about Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis at this point. They're talking about the newly unveiled PlayStation, or, uh, you know, Nintendo had the Ultra 64 back when it was known as that, like, via, like, Nintendo Power subscriptions, or... Yeah, people were thinking about the future, not so much trying to put other consoles on life support, and Genesis uh, in particular. I like how really you tried to hide that. the fact that you died there, John. I did die there. Yeah, but you just, like, you quickly jump cut as, oh, that didn't happen. I swear. <laughs> And also, I could have sworn that at one point a bullet went straight through Mega Man's head and you didn't take any damage. But he's airhead. <laughs> uh, he's a it's... super fighting robot. Yeah. I, Mega I Man! <laughs> I, I get it. His, they made his sprite a bit bigger, but they didn't change his hitbox at all. Quite that possibly. That sounds feasible, yes. <laughs> Which is kind of sloppy, but at least it doesn't make the game any harder. No, oh, these assholes are still there. Can I do it? Can I? Oh, no, God. Oh, ooh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Tiny I love the magnet box. beam. It does look like a fun <laughs> weapon. Well, no, it doesn't actually do any damage. It just creates a little thingy for you to stand yeah, on. Yeah, I know. Platforms. But technically, Create your own technically platforms. It's a weapon. Technically, it is a weapon. Oh, oh, yeah, the boss music is. It's like a good. Um, I don't know the exact tempo numbers, but it's a lot. A lot faster than before. Yeah, it's it's much faster than the original NES game. <laughs> and that's why the Ice Climbers won't be appearing in Smash 4. No, don't, <laughs> Sorry, don't, Ted. No, they will. They have to. God damn it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just killed Popo. <laughs> uh, Nana can go out uh, on her own. She can reproduce. <laughs> Uh, but I do like the um, the added save feature for Wily Wars, though. You know, Wily Wars it, as a whole has some cool benefits, but it also just has a lot of negatives, which just sort of cancels everything out at the very end of the day. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the Mega Man games besides from 3 are particularly long either, so... Mm, I think they added some animation to the background of the level. I mean, if I'm playing 1 or 2, I beat it in one sitting. <laughs> yeah. And that was the case for a lot of these. Uh, Wily Wars is something I uh, record in spurts. Uh, usually a Mega Man per day. Uh, though there was a considerable gap between 2 and 3. Because I just... Uh, I was kind of Mega Man... I was recording this right after the tail end of the Mega Man Marathon for my review channel. So and that's like why... A year ago. Uh, but the thing is, like, the reason why I went after it was like, you know what, I already got a lot of this Mega Man experience in my head right at the moment. I might, might as well do well. it now. Yeah, I might as well do it now. Uh, but after Mega Man 2, I was like, yeah, I'm going to take a break, actually. I'm a little tired. No, I'm sleepy. But you're yeah, a robot. You don't need to sleep. I totally get you. A little bit of Mega Man burnout there. Yeah. And even then, if nowadays, if I'm going to go back to Mega Man Classic, I'm just going to play the original 8-bit incarnations, which I still think are the superior products. <laughs> Wait, wasn't there, a, wasn't there a platform there in the original? No. That was originally not a bottomless pit in the NES game. 
Yeah, that that there was a little platform there that you could stand on, and then you just had to go back up and go back down the the ladder. Yeah, I think that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> huh? But then the Genesis gave me a rude wake up call. I wonder what wonder what the point of the difference is. I also see that you don't like to do an awful lot of platforming in this platformer. Fuck you, magnet beam. That's why I love it. You can create your own platforms and find your own way of completing the level. AKA fucking it in the ass completely. It's like Mega Man Universe, except not. <laughs> uh, I was actually <laughs> interested in that, too. I'm still not over that. Any game that allows you to play as bad at box art, Mega Man gets an instant plus in my book. So uh, you're a big fan I don't of Street know. Fighter Tekken. I, I don't see, a lot of people gave Street Fighter Cross Tekken the ship shit. Street Fighter Cross Tekken uh, was a sloppy game. It was pretty sloppily made, and the biggest sin that they committed was the DLC roster. There were 12 on disc characters that were all available from the off on the Vita, but you had to pay to get them on the PS3. Well, that's one way of pushing the Vita, I suppose. That's pretty much all it was doing. That's a third of the roster, though. <laughs> Jesus. Now, I'm not sure whether it's because of the way I was recording this game. And, like, I'll, I'll be the first to say, um, yeah, folks, I was using save states uh, for the sake of making sure everything goes smoothly in the editing process. But I was more using save states at the beginning of every stage so I can try and go through everything in one run-through. But I'm, as some of you guys have pointed out in the archives channel, back when we still used it, uh, there are audio skips, and I don't know what causes it. I don't think it's the game's fault, it's more of the hardware. I use Kega Fusion when I'm emulating a, a Genesis games because it's so reliable. But, uh, do you guys happen to know what causes audio skips in it all? No clue. Yeah. Mm, nah, no, I can't say I do. Dr. Wiley. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Wiley. He looks like a bottle, a body with just feet attached to it. So was he? Was he just tailing his UFO taxi there? <laughs> Commandeer to UFO. At the very least, the uh, sound effect is not as obnoxious as the 8-bit game. Yeah, it's still yeah. pretty obnoxious. Yeah, <laughs> it's still pretty yeah, obnoxious. It's just not <laughs> as obnoxious. Look at that glorious one layer of completely stationary Don't. grass. Parallax scrolling? What's that? <laughs> no, I'm more looking at the clouds. You know, you, you see, they have the clouds at different layers, so I thought, oh, parallax scroll. Nope. They're just all one layer of clouds. <laughs> yep. Green Hill Zone, this ain't. Or are they bushes? <laughs> <laughs> no, we got grass down there. I don't think that was in the 8-bit game. Hey there, buddy. Gonna... Yeah, they did add some touch-ups to the game, like in the, in the in the fire level. Obviously, there was there was a, a sort of a flowing effect to the fire in the background that I'm pretty sure you don't see in any ends in, in any 8-bit games. So that was nice. If we're gonna go to just talk graphics, I think like it does, you know, it, it is prettier than the 8-bit versions of the game. But when we're talking about flow of gameplay, uh, they botched that. Uh, well, apart from the, uh, oh, holy shit, you just got dogpiled there. That yeah. happens in the original, too. I don't think there's any way to avoid yeah. it. That's Not bullshit. really, no. That is bullshit. Uh, that's, that is kind of why my, why Mega Man isn't really to my taste, if I'm honest. Sometimes it just blindsides you with things that you can't really avoid. Sometimes, if you know they're coming, yeah but not all the time. So Ryan, out of curiosity, um, as the Mega Man guy, have you ever, you know, w tried Wily Wars? Uh, once, and nice job there. No, oh, thank you. Anyway. The button is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not walk off a platform day? No, no, not. That was last week, John. Last week? Yeah, we were all playing Bubsy 3D. <laughs> Get with the times, man. Uh, so behind. Youngsters today. And your shitty games. <laughs> Says uh, okay. played Sonic Genesis how many times? Anyway, this is 
the biggest problem with the Wily Wars version of Wily, Tow uh, Wily Stage 1. Those two energy capsules I just picked up for the sake of having ammo for the magnet beam do not respawn once you pick them up. In the original game, if you needed the ammo for the magnet beam, you can get those energy capsules, climb up the ladder, and go right back down the ladder, and the energy capsules will respawn. You know, so you can refill your ammo to max capacity because that part right there you need the magnet beam for. In the Wily Wars version, those capsules disappear completely after you pick them up. They do not respawn whatsoever. Huh. So you can put yourself in a dead game, at least until you get a game over, if you mess up the magnet beam section. Oh, is that a... Oh, I'm gonna say this guy looks a lot better with the shading. But, uh... Is that a is that a, an overall change that they made to the game? Where they, uh... Where, where just respawning power-ups don't respawn anymore? Uh, that, um, it's the, it's, the, it's the only standout case I can think of. Did they at you know, least fix the, the opposite problem where enemies will respawn if you move so much as an inch backwards? Um, in the Wily Wars version? I don't know, because I'm, I, generally, I generally tend not to go backwards often. Well, that's just the thing with Mega Man games that I've noticed, is that the, the enemy respawn is, like, instant. So if they, they, if they so, quote-unquote, fix the item box respawning uh, issue, they better have as hell of fix the enemy respawning one. Yeah, bug, you know, it was probably feature. an oversight. When they designed the game originally, they probably they probably put those two uh, those two capsules there knowing that they would respawn just so that you would have ammo for that magnet beam section. But but uh, when they remade the game, they weren't uh, they they were being well, obviously, they were being a bit quick about it, and not thinking so much about level design, because in theory, the levels are already designed, and if you're not changing anything, <laughs> you don't have to worry about screwing anything up. Except they did change something, and they didn't think it would screw anything up, but it did. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Why aren't you using the pause trick? Can't do that in the Wild Wars version. Yeah, it doesn't work in this one. Instead, you get massive slowdown whenever Mega Man jumps, which pretty much works as a pause trick because <laughs> it makes it incredibly easy to avoid everything. Yep, that that's pretty much it. There's n no real excuse for that in this because the system can clearly handle it. <laughs>